Only thing I'm plugging is Forgotten Seasons. Welcome back to Forgotten Seasons. Steven Jackson, how you doing today, man? My brothers, what's good? Jesse. Chilling. J-Mac, how you doing? I'm pretty solid. Hmm. Pretty solid. So t- today we're going to be talking about the 2010 Bobcats. Uh, I want to start a few years before that. Uh, first off, Stack, so in 2007, you guys make history with the Warriors. You beat the Mavericks. We believe a team that is still etched in history today. Um, I want to start in 2008 because I've heard you tell this story, but it's unbelievable. Uh, you negotiating your contract with Don Nelson before the 2008 season. You go on after that contract is signed to have one of the best years of your career. Uh, you're with the likes of Dwayne Wade, LeBron James for stats. But how did you negotiate your contract? And I believe you did it just by yourself. There wasn't, was there an agent? How'd that story go? Yeah, I didn't have an agent at the time. Um, they had basically was trading everybody from the team. So I knew I had a little leverage with um, – them wanting to keep me, you know, I was the last one probably standing. Me and Monte, and Monte was younger, so he had a he was on a he was on a longer deal at the time, and uh, I had two years left on my deal that I had signed from Indiana. Um, I knew I was in a great position because I was the only veteran on the team. Really, um, I knew I had a great relationship with Don Nelson, so I went to the to the president, I mean the uh, general manager of the team, which was Bobby Rouse at the time, and um, a lady that worked for. She was a player personnel. She was right under the general manager. Her name was Nita Berry. Mm-hmm. Her and my mom were good friends. They hung out after games, before games. So she took a liking to me. And any question I had, she really helped me out with anything I needed with the organization. Even helped me a lot um, with my foundation when I was doing give back to my hometown. She helped me with sponsors and other people to help th- do things like that. So I was averaging, uh, I think, 20 at the time. And there's a lot of guys that weren't averaging the points that I was averaging and wasn't wasn't just coming out of the playoffs. They were making more money than me. And um, I decided to go to Bobby with the stats of those players and my stats and show him also what they was making and told him I wanted three years, $30 million uh, added to my contract already or I'm going to walk. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to ask for a trade. Mm-hmm. Well, he gave me the deal. But they didn't tell me that before they gave me the deal, they didn't tell me that they was going younger next, uh, the next season, going to next season. They didn't tell me it was going to be going younger mm-hmm. and they was going to be trading more guys away. Mm-hmm. So coming into that regular season, you know, I got my money, but Bobby didn't keep his word on building this team back to where it was before you got rid of Al, Barron, and all those guys. We, you didn't make not one move to show that. You drafted Steph Curry, which was great, but I didn't know Steph was going to be the Steph he is today. Right. So, uh, so I went and, you know, I, I told him I, I wanted to be traded, but I didn't go tell him that I wanted to be traded like an asshole, right? I had a great, great relationship with Don Nelson, and, uh, and uh, I, I basically told him, you know what I'm saying, Coach, I, I hope this year works because, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of young guys, this team is going young. And, you know, Don Nelson's a straight shooter. Yeah, we going young, Jack. Mm-hmm. We going young. He's a straight shooter, so I sat on it for a couple of days until I had to go. Uh, to camp and the media once the media came out of camp, you know, I basically told him like I'm a professional I'm gonna do my job always. I'm gonna respect my teammates respect my organization respect my coaches give 110 percent But I want I came in this game a winner mm-hmm. and I want to leave a winner It's too late in my career to just sit around and be cool with losing mm-hmm. right? I, I would never do that So, you know Don Don Nelson gave me a great opportunity to go be a part of something great and uh, in Charlotte, I ended up having my shit, my best years in Charlotte. What, what, what was the thought? What was the thought behind negotiating your your own contract? Was it the influence from the lady in the organization? Was it just you know what I mean? Just you know, just wanting to be you know representing? Was it just a shot in the dark? You know what I mean? What was the you know what was the impetus behind you going out and renegotiating your deal? Uh, impetus. I like I like that word. Write that down. Um, Boom. Yeah, I, I um, for me, I had Dan Fagan early in my career, and I, I only hired Dan. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people only hired Dan when it was time to get money. Mm-hmm. Facts. He wasn't good at endorsements. Mm-hmm. Rest in peace, Dan. I rest in peace to him too. I, I miss him. He was a great guy, but he wasn't the endorsement guy. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that's gonna go into that team and get you your big contract mm-hmm. when it's time. And he coming. You, your have, con- you have a good he year. Your contract Dan, here. Yep. He come around. And you get see Dan paid. Fagan. Yep. Yep. Facts. He, he did it for millions of people. So I kind of learned the game from Dan. You know, mm-hmm. I I I kind of always stood on stood on my own and marched to the beat of my own drum. So. Mm-hmm. 
you know, I knew what I was worth. I, did, I, I felt at that point what I was doing with that team, what I had done in my career, I didn't need nobody to speak for me. Can't nobody tell me what I'm worth more than, what, you know what I'm saying, better than I know. Mm -hmm. So I was just confident. And J Mac, it was a little bit of everything. It was a little part author in me. It was a little was being, me being confident. It was a chip on my shoulder. You know, it, it, it was just a little bit of everything. But at the end of the day, it was me believing in myself that I can get it done because I seen the stats of everybody else. And I'm, I've, I've been up there with everybody else my whole career. It's just that cloud that's been over me my whole career. People are trying to keep that cloud over me. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of having somebody speak for me, I took the chance on myself and it worked. It usually doesn't happen that way too because what, you had two years left on your deal? At that time, when you signed, nobody the gets a three-year extension no with two years left on their deal. Mm -mm. I think that says a lot about you too. That you did all of that after the media tries to stain you. I mean, after everything happens in Indiana, and it, it leads me to my next point because when you arrive in Charlotte, uh, you get traded there in, in uh, nine games into the 2009-10 season, um, and. You know, there were a lot of the media members were kind of saying and asking people like Larry Brown, oh, are you sure you can, you know, are you sure you guys want Steven Jackson? He's this, he's that. But everybody mm -hmm. that's played with you and been on the same team as, as you, they have nothing but good things to say about you. And I think it goes back to that. You're, you're willing to die on the court. You're willing to die for your teammates, literally. Um, where does that come from? Because usually somebody that uh, has to play in what seven, eight countries to even make the NBA gets cut mm -hmm. after they get drafted. Usually those aren't the type of qualities that somebody like that has. Usually you, you find your way into the NBA and you're happy just to be there. You're a leader on the team and you inject confidence into, into the second unit, into everybody. Where does that come from? Because I think that's a very rare characteristic. And, but right before that, Dylan, I, I just want to yep. say not only the overseas journey and, and everything in, in between that, there's the free agent camp battles. Well, there's a sub world of what people don't understand is when you go to free agent camp battles and you might be, you know, you're trying to make the team or make a training camp, you know what I mean? And sometimes the regular players, the roster players are in these free agents because they want them to get extra reps in the summer. And you can go to every team has one every summer. The before summer league got real big, you know what I mean? And it was just a couple teams. So that is actually how I met Jack years ago. You mm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's why we were we, we were on we were like the road, like we we would be put on the same team as Where? because we had mm -hmm. the cloud. Wherever we can be at a uh, it could be Chicago, uh, Chicago pre-draft. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We on the same team. You know what I mean? Where wherever yeah. it was, teams, um, summer runs. You know what I mean? We always like there's all the guys with the question marks really? on the same team. Oh, we, oh, <laughs> who, who, who were some, who were some of the other guys there? Who were the other familiar faces? Reggie Freeman, uh, Victor Page. Um, uh, you know Skip Austin. You know Ray for Austin Skip, before Ray he for got in there. Um, yeah. Winfred Walton. Yep. You know talented, uh, but Melvin Eli. Turquin Mott. Yeah. yeah. It's a group of guys that were misunderstood because a lot of those guys that he named today are, are doing great outside of sports, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So so, so uh, I forgot your question, though, Dylan. Where does that confidence come from? I mean, you're, you're, oh, okay, you, yeah. you have to struggle to even make the NBA, and not only do you make it, but you're, according to everybody that you've played with, like the epitome of a leader. Yeah, I think I think for me, um, first it starts uh, with seeing my grandfather. My grandfather had uh, nine kids. Um, all our parents, all my aunts and uncles worked, so all my cousins, cousins, nieces and nephews. I mean, excuse me, not nieces and nephews, but cousins, older cousins and uncles. We all stayed in the same house, grew up in the same house. So it's like. They nine kids, my grandfather uh, taking care of his nine kids and his 15 grandchildren, right? So, like, I seen what a man was. Mm -hmm. um, and then, then as I got older, seeing him do all these things, you know, my, I, I get to be, be explained why I have his name, right? Uh, Stephen Jesse Jackson, my grandfather's name is Jesse Jackson. So, too, so then it goes to the point where I play basketball. The year I get drafted to get in the NBA, my grandfather dies. So the whole role of my family and the guy being the breadwinner and the person who's taking care of the family and being the head of the family just fell in my lap. Me not knowing why, me not knowing why I named him, but it made sense when I made it to the NBA the year he died because that's mm -hmm. the first year I really started making some money. And I was able, the first thing I did was build his, uh, his wife, my grandmother's house, 
and build my mama house. So my co the confidence came from watching him knowing it could be done, watching him make a way out of no way, mm -hmm. watch him take care of everybody before he take care of himself. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather was one of the first people in, our, in my hometown to have a restaurant named after them. I owned this, it was a restaurant called Jackson and Company. And I used to work there on the weekends busting tables and stuff. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So he showed me what defined the odds and what making it to take care of everybody was. So I always wanted to be that. So not knowing that I was going to be a millionaire and make a lot of money, but getting into the NBA, uh, that's where the confidence came from. You know, being, being a... Uh, being five minutes from my um, from my older brother, and he's getting killed, and I'm five minutes away. If I would have known, I could have been right there to you know to try to avoid. Oh, we both you know anything could happen. But I'm just, I, 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 that's why I'm so loyal to my friends. That's why I care about what people think about me. That's why I care about showing people that I care about them and that I that I ride for them, that I love them. And and I also like to say that I I. I like to reiterate that I always say that, but I, I like to do stuff with people that I don't benefit from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? That 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 was my grandfather. On Fridays, it was catfish day. Mm -hmm. Homeless people can come through the back and get a fresh, hot catfish dinner, bro. Mm -hmm. It's people in line in the front paying for these dinners. But on Fridays, he giving free food. The same catfish that people paying for, he giving it to the homeless people for free. So, like, I, I seen a lot mm -hmm. from him and... uh it made me stronger, it made me confident, and uh, the ups and downs of life of losing my brother and all that stuff, it just made me want to be a protector, provider for everybody around me. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Y'all know how I am with y'all. If we anywhere, y'all know I'm going to be the first one to jump in, in front of it for any one of us. And that's just the way I was taught. That's my city. All my friends been the same way with me. You know what I'm saying? It's been many times where I got pulled over and I got in trouble in my hometown. I had friends jump in front of or even the police. The police see me and let me go. You play basketball, man. We know you got a career. So... Mm -hmm. I had a lot of people show me some love in my life, and I think that's why I, I go out my way to show love to other people. Hmm. That's beautiful. Yep. So setting the scene in Charlotte, you get there nine games into the 2009-10 season. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, to that point, was a sorry franchise. Uh, 15, mm -hmm. uh, the, the five years before, 18 wins, 26, 33, 32, 35. They've never sniffed the playoffs. I want to start uh, at the guy at the helm, Larry Brown. Because, again, a lot of people were asking him when you got traded, are you sure you can, you know, handle Steven Jackson? Uh, you know, he just blew up with Don Nelson. But you said, or you pulled a quote uh, that Larry Brown said around that time, and we're paraphrasing, but it's something like this. God put me on this earth to coach guys like Allen Iverson and Steven Jackson. Um, mm -hmm. the, it's well documented, Larry Brown and Allen Iverson's relationship. I think they clash at the beginning. But mm -hmm. now if you ask either of them, I think they're brothers. You know, they would die for each other. Mm -hmm. Help us understand who Larry Brown is and why you really hit it off with him. Because some people don't, but Larry Brown used to be a player. Uh, he's from Brooklyn, New York. And if you know anybody from Brooklyn around that time, they're very hard-nosed, uh, mm -hmm. no BS. Who is Larry Brown and why did you get along with him so well? Larry Brown is a guy <laughs> that, regardless who you are as a person, regardless how you respond to certain things, as long as you respect the game of basketball, he loves you. Mm. Uh, when, when he say he's meant to coach guys like me and Allen Iverson, we are some of the most misunderstood guys to ever come through the NBA. But I think he sees through all the stuff that people say on the outside and he look what's right in front of him, right? Mm -hmm. he, don't, he, don't, he don't go through the media, he don't go what people say. Like he looks, he looks directly into you and get his own version of you. Mm -hmm. And even with, the, even with the bullshit, like, He'll call you on it. Like, for me, I come out of games and I, I get a technical foul. I can be having a good game. He'll, I come to the sideline. You can't do that. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. But in the time I he on me. But as soon as the time I saw we going back in the court, he called him to play for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He called him to play for me to get an ISO. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he, 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 one, of those, he one of those coaches. He's going to hold you accountable. But if you playing basketball with the passion that me and Allen Iverson played, he'll take that over anybody that's not saying nothing or just walking that fine line. Question for both of you. Go ahead, go ahead. Do you, uh, were there coaches through your career that did the opposite, that would talk about you in the media and you would hear it otherwise? Like I heard uh, Doc Rivers was talking to KG and Paul Pierce, and he was talking about how today uh, players and coaches some, sometimes are like afraid to confront their teammates. But I, I think 
if I'm if I'm thinking correctly, that's the way that you build chemistry is attacking those problems head on, addressing them. Can either of you think of coaches that you had throughout your career that were just like went behind your back and and didn't do that and didn't address you head on? Yes. Now I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell you I was blessed. I had I had um, I went I went through it two times. Beginning of my career with Byron Scott. Um, Byron Scott. Mm. I mean, by the way, who by game. the way is a, is a, is known as a tough, cool coach. dude, cool dude. But as a coach, cool dude, he's literally yeah, yeah, he's, he's generally regarded in the league as like you know when you hear stories out of the wherever training camp he was, you see them players in preseason, they like man, Jesus, you know what I mean? <laughs> he's generally regarded as a toughest, you know, old Showtime Pat Riley spinoff. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you gonna go through it with Byron, but I go, I go so. Just being Stephen Jesse Jackson, you know what I mean, and a strong will personality mixed with what Byron is historically known for, you know. But you can you can you can speak to the rest, Jack. But you know, it's not just a Stephen Jesse Jackson thing. Byron Scott right. as a coach is generally regarded as tough as nails. You about to go through something, you know what I mean. So, mm-hmm. but but go ahead, Stack. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. But, but his, his his whole beef with me too was because Steph took a liking to me so so well. And him and Steph, him and Steph never hit it off. You know, when I first got there, he didn't know who I was. I was just a body in camp. I went from a body in camp to 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 actually on the on the on the second team. Yep. Uh, to Steph taking a liking for me, to me working out. You know, after practice with Steph, to me killing the first team. You know, to 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 the first game of the season. Now I'm starting. You know what I'm saying? But Byron wasn't expecting that. He didn't know none of that. You know, and I um uh, I ended up making a rookie All Star team. That year, I was leading all rookies in scoring, to be to be exact. Damn. <laughs> leading all rookies in scoring, dog, to be exact. In the league. And I come back in the league and with, with the number one pick on my team, my brother Kenya Martin. Mm-hmm. And, and come back after All-Star break, I don't play at all the rest of the season. That's cold. Not one minute? Like, I like, don't like, know at, why. like at all? That's cold. Like a like. couple minutes Bro, here and there? It, it like psh, psh, to the point where I wasn't even playing at all. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and I'm trying to figure it out, and you know, come to find that it was all because of Steph. You know, Steph took a liking to me, and he felt like Steph was 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 in control of the team, and that's why I was playing and all that. And I had nothing to do with none of that, but I was caught up in that at Byron South. So then I ended up getting Pop. Pop didn't do that at all. Pop coming straight to you with it. He had never embarrassed a player in the media. If he if if he says anything into in the media about you, it's to uplift you and to give you your flowers. He not demeaning nobody in the media. Mm-hmm. Then I had. Um, then I had uh, I don't count Terry Stouts. I don't count <laughs> the, the time in Atlanta. I ain't, I, I wasn't that long enough to have a relationship with him, so I don't even know how that was. Yeah. Uh, nobody cared. Uh, I get to Indiana. Rick Hall, all Mike Brown, two of my favorite guys to this day. They would never if, if they said something about me in the paper. I deserved it. Right. I definitely deserved it, and I didn't look at it no other way. Mm-hmm. Don Nelson, my guy, my guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Love him to death. Nobody's giving me the compliments from a Hall of Fame coach like Don Nelson has. Mm-hmm. Larry Brown, a straight shooter, somebody I respect. I, I, my relationship with Larry Brown was so good, I was closer with his brother, Herb. Mm. You know, so 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 I, I, I was me. blessed. Yep, and uh, uh, then I have um, um, a coach, uh, Coach Silas. That's my cousin. Mm-hmm. He wanted to see me win. He wanted to see everybody win. He's a straight up guy too. He's similar to Larry Brown. Long as you respect the game, I don't care what you do. Long as you respect the game, you know what I'm saying. So then I ended up going back to pop. So I, I I had great coaches, but Byron Scott was the only time that I felt slighted by a coach. Every other coach that I was with, I got love for him to this day. I respect him the most. Shit, I went over two early. I was uh, 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 I went. Uh, <laughs> I had Paul Westfall, you know, Dylan. I think I've shared with you or both yep. of you guys. You know, uh, you know, rest in peace to the guy. You know what I mean. But my Paul Westfall story, and then I had Nate McMillan. So you know what I mean. So and then after that, I have Phil Jackson, right? So there's a completely different dynamic when you switch from coaching styles, like Jack is talking about, when you cool with one, and you, this you don't know what's going on with the other one. You almost avoid each other like a bad marriage, like two ships of the mm-hmm. night. You don't want them to know what you own. It's a hard right. that, that veil between the coach and the player. 
you know what I mean? Now it's dope, you know, the new coaches because they're former players, you know, everybody's cool, they can talk, communicate with each other. But back then, you know, that veil was tough. So after that, I, I played for a Lenny Wilkins, Phil Jackson, you know what I mean? These, you know, the top, you know, the top notch Hall of Fame coaches. And when they came to me, like Jack said, with the straight shooting shit, or, you know, even George Carl, you know, a lot of people don't yeah. like George Carl, but George Carl was giving it, he was bringing it to your doorstep. You know what I mean? Hey, this is what I need. You want to play? You want to remain on the roster? This is how I need, need this is what I need from you. I don't want to see you doing this. I don't want you in the training room. Wooty, wooty, woo. You know what I mean? It's off putting sometimes, but you know what I mean? When you get, there's a hard dynamic that's hard to adjust to sometimes when you go between the two coaching styles. You know what I mean? So, um, I, I, f I forgot what we was talking about, but you know what I mean? That, I, I didn't want to digress, but I understand what no, Stack says when, it, when he goes from, you know, pop and, you know what I mean, Carlisle and, you know what I mean, Larry Brown and, and high-quality coaches, you know what I mean, when the drop-off happens and you get a coach that you're not really vibing with like that, it's a hard thing to get past sometimes. Yeah, it's, it's one coach I ain't talking about that I don't even want to say his name because it was so bad for those two months. Yeah. And Milwaukee Scott Skiles, I can't stand him. Hey, you think I'm uh, holding my tongue too on a couple of situations, so I com yeah, I, com I, I completely get it. Yeah. <laughs> Scott Skiles. We had the coolest. We had the coolest assistant coach ever in Jim Boyle. But Jim Boylan? Scott you think Skiles, Jim really? Boylan? What? That's my dog. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, he had yeah. like the worst. Yeah, Jim is. He had like the worst tenure. I think him and Rondo. He was with the Bulls, and that was that went. Horribly. He doesn't pass the eye test for. He a doesn't cool pass coach. the eye. Nah, test. He, he don't pass the eye Not test. But he cool with him. Yeah, up. Yeah. Really, I like it's him. It's usually That's like great. that. Yeah. Uh, so get it into some of the roster again. This is a team that had little to no success before you got there. Um, they were always a good defensive team, but they couldn't score to you know to save their mm -hmm. life. Uh, starting up top, Gerald Wallace. He makes the All Star game that year. Um, you probably should have been the one to make it. But I think why I want to start with Gerald Wallace is because when we think about like the modern NBA, it's all about big wings and you and Gerald Wallace. I think the contrast between your play style and your personalities is what made it work. Mm -hmm. Gerald Wallace, one of the best defenders, one of the best energy guys, but seems like kind of a mellow personality, maybe a little bit quiet, quiet, you quiet, never dude, seen. quiet dude. Uh, just tell us a little bit about what Gerald Wallace was like playing uh, on the court. And then also what's the dude like off the court? Well, I mean, G, one of my favorite teammates. I'm still, I'll be looking for Gerald. I bumped into his brother recently the other day, telling him I want him to come on the show. For I just sure. want to talk mm -hmm. to him, see what he got mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. One thing I do know about Gerald, he's somewhere straight in the country, um, gambling, having a good time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Gerald was, was, was one of my favorite teammates because I can rely on him every night. Mm. Uh, and what way is that? Yeah, yeah. As far, as far as bringing the intensity to the game and, and, and giving a, he might be, it's the only person on the court when I go out there, this might be the only person that might play harder than me. Mm. Like, I gotta, I gotta see if, you know what I'm saying? Every mm. night we gotta see who's playing the hardest because he's bringing it every night. Mm. And, 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 and I felt like I was with Ron again. He's not as talented as Ron, but me and him doing the same things me and Ron used to do. We used to argue about who guarding who. Now I got the best player. I'm going, let me go. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. me and him were the same, uh, we had the same passion the same drive and the same will to win. We both wanted to win and do anything to win. I think, um, as you said, Dylan, the difference, the different personalities we had made it work. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm loud and boisterous. I'm, I'm talking all the trash. I'm talking to the No, rest. not He's you. Super... <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, don't, hey, don't, don't get it wrong. Gerald got text too now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drell, Drell was, Drell used to get text too. Both was, one thing about Gerald. Y'all both was going back and forth for a minute with the energy. You know what I mean? No, you know, so, yeah. Go. I was worse because he used to always try to pull me back. I was worse. Yeah. But he used to always pull me back. But G was the perfect teammate for me because... He did the things that I couldn't do well. Mm. He was a high jumper. Mm -hmm. He was a shot blocker. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 he was great finishing around above the rim. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, his, his 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 motor was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And and I was a better scorer. I was a better one on one player. I was a better playmaker. Mm -hmm. But on the on the defensive end, every night, whatever two and three guard we played, they had a they had a tough night. Yeah, they had sure. a tough night because I guarantee you, if they beat us. They didn't. The stars didn't beat us. It was it, it was the it was the the role players, the other guys that had big games. Mm -hmm. Because, like you said, we were the best defensive team in the league. We were locked in on defense. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's one thing why Larry Brown, Larry Brown, let us uh, was let us be so free on offense. 
because he didn't care because we locking every one thing about it, we might not we might lose a lot of games but the games we we uh we lose we ain't getting blown out it's because we could I was the only one scoring we couldn't score mm-hmm. so but Jer was the perfect teammate for me man like I I I was blessed to be able to play along along uh, alongside guys like Ron Ginobili mm-hmm. BD Matt you know what I'm saying I I I had good I had good wing partners. Uh, that I was playing with, and uh, Gerald Wise was definitely at the top of it. Where does what's your where does Gerald rank in the best defenders that you've ever played with? As the guards, uh, it could be it could be any, just the the dudes that if if you if 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 you're playing defense because with, I mean, you, 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 you you're talking about defenders, you know I played with Jo Tim Duncan, you know like yeah, so okay per, 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 yeah. per, <laughs> perimeter defenders. Perimeter, he's definitely I would put him behind Ron and Matt. Mm-hmm. I put him third behind Ron and Matt. It's a good list. It's a yeah. solid list, super solid list. Well, yeah. Uh, let's keep going down the line. Uh, Boris Diaz. I got Ron as the best two way player ever. So yeah, Ron Artest. Ron Artest. I mean, <laughs> I don't think people realize we talked about this a few weeks ago. Like, is it fair to say that that people legitimately were afraid of Ron Artest and and didn't yes. want anything to do with him? Yes. Terrified. Afraid is not the word. One Terrifying. through five. Position. I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. Play, top players, top, top players, players that's starting, that's averaging 20, 25 points. When you get the ball in the paint, he turned the elbow on one time. Bro. You come back down the next play, bro. somebody else guard him. Bro. I'm telling you, bro. And then he going to bow was, down. He going to go through the line. You going to put somebody else out there thinking the next tough guy. Okay, we'll put him over there. He's the tough guy. He's the tougher guy. He going to get bowed. Then you go, he going to go through a big no matter who it was. You was going to get it. I had teammates, you know, that I played with alongside. You know what I mean? And looked like, damn, you really affected Ron. But the, here's the cold part about it. If you was a competitor – and Ron liked you, and Ron got along with you. He just kept it to basketball. He just kept he gonna it. play dumb hard. He gonna elbow you and all that, but he ain't gonna he, try to make it seem like it's a fight or nothing like that. It's just basketball. That's how no, we play. Look, I'm clearing he only play through. one way. Tell, yeah, I'm clearing through. He'll let you know if you mess with you. He's like, right, you know, I got to I clear play. through and do the thing. You know what I mean? But if if you would get into it and like start getting all in your feelings and reacting to the things he's doing, because he don't, he not on that. He out there playing basketball, like Stack said, like the way he, this is how I play. This is what got me here. This is Queen Bridge in the house. You know, this is the whole package. This is what I'm giving you. But the minute you got in your feelings about it or tried to play Ron, like he was outside of his mind and not playing basketball, that's when he would go outside of his mind. And and this is what people don't say too. A lot of times when Ron can play and doing the games, he was right, bro. Yep. He was getting fouled. He was yep. getting beat up, but he had such a bad rap that they wasn't trying to hit. I'm gonna give you a perfect example, dog. We I don't remember what game it was, but he was po- we, he was posting up, and every time he he get the ball and swing through, they kept hitting his arms. You know what I'm saying? So he lost the ball the first time. So he telling the rep the second time he he swung it through. He didn't lose it, but they fouled him again, and he went crazy, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm so I, so I told him I said, bro, don't even worry about it. Go through his arm. We threw it to him again. The same dude kept doing the same thing because the referees wouldn't call it. Bro, he went through the dude's arm. The dude grabbed his arm and ran straight to the bench. <laughs> Do you know who it was? Didn't play another minute. Do you know who it was? They didn't call him. They didn't call him. No, I don't remember. We'll they didn't call him foul. He went straight and laid it up. He went straight and laid it up. The dude went to the um, to the sideline with his hole in his arm. Didn't play no more that game. Is it fair to say, I think you and Ron's career got most impacted by the malice at the Palace. If no question, if Ron, if that doesn't happen and Ron continues on that trajectory, what is like the ceiling of who he could have been as a player? I think for me, and not just saying it because he's my for my favorite teammate. Um, as you know, I put my career on the line for him. Um, I think Ron would have been well, the first to win MVP and def- defensive player mm. year multiple mm-hmm. years. What was his offensive game like? That, bro. What was his offensive game like? He was. He, he, he had a nice jumper, but this is the thing, though. He didn't need all that. Like, he's, he, he handles the ball like a point guard, first of all. People don't know Ron you had you're handled. Not, you're not about to steal it. New York handle. You're not about to you're steal not it. not taking the ball. No. He's 260, 6'7", 6'8", and this this thing. He's smart. He's catching the ball in the small post area where nobody is strong enough if they're guard to, to, to guard him. And if you're a big man, you're not fast enough to keep up with him. Mm-hmm. So if he catches the ball – in the small post on anybody in the league around that time, it's a foul or a bucket. Mm. It's, it just plays it that simple. And your best player on the other end, he might take him out the game. 
just completely out the game. And he's, he, he did, he was doing that for multiple years, dog. He was doing that. People just couldn't look over the, the other stuff he was doing because they didn't understand his passion for the game. And some of his stuff, you know, I ain't making excuses for him. But if, if they were just locked in on a basketball player, Ron was, Brilliant. you would never see you would never see that again. Mm -hmm. You would never see that in the NBA mm -hmm. because the, the, the way he was the, the way he played the game, the way he grew up to the passion of actually knowing how to play basketball mm -hmm. at that size with that attitude on both ends of the court. Like, I'm not the only guy that feel like this. You can ask a lot of guys that's, that's, not, that, that's not in their feelings and, and that's not hating on Ron. That's not hating. They'll say. Ron was by far the best two-way player we was in the league, bro. Fierce competitor, uh, uh, abnormally savantish on offense, considering that he didn't have an unbelievable package or a dead eye shot. Mm -hmm. But but the the competition and the knowing, the self awareness of what his game was and his frame and his passion for the game. When you mix that together, you uh like 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 Stack said, well, it'll never be seen before. It doesn't get enough recognition. We didn't re uh, understand we were watching a master at. Is at, at, at mm -hmm. work at, at the time, but uh, Dylan, go down the rest of that, that, that roster. No, so last it, no last thing on Ron Artest. I think because we were talking about how New York City had hadn't produced like a star, and we didn't even yeah. mention him. And I think you know some things happened to his career, but like he wasn't even mentioned. So maybe we were we were forgetting yeah, I too. Mean, Steph, Steph, Steph is the best player. But if I had to pick one player on my team, you got it. it's definitely Ron. You definitely taking Ron. You definitely taking Ron. Yeah, well, ain't no question about it. Well, that was a super enthusiastic Ron Artest monologue. Shout out to Meta. Uh, that's the family. Shout out to Ron Meta. Meta. Yes, Shout sir. I got, I, got, I got another guy that I think might we might take it up even more of a notch because I know that you're a big Boris Diaw guy, and he was killing this year ah. on the Bobcats. Uh, give us some Boris Diaw game. How good was he? The most talented player I've ever played with, my, all around. Tim Duncan? All, all around. Tim, Tim couldn't shoot threes. Mm. That's probably the only hole in Tim game. He doesn't get enough Boris credit. Can do all that. He doesn't get enough credit on the Euro list. I think he get he's well, too know, far and, down and, and on the, only, the Euro list. But the only reason why because his motor. Boris was happy to be in the NBA. He mm -hmm. ain't doing too much. He ain't doing too little. You know, you might have you might, and then he ain't gonna shower. He either. might have a game. He's he not going to shower either, but he, he might have a game where he have 30, 30 10, and 10. Yep. 30, 10, and 10. And then the next game, 5, 4, because, you know, his, he just didn't care to, to play 110 every night. Mm -hmm. But if I had to pick one player, Bars Diaz was definitely one of the – probably the most talented player all around Packard. that I played with because he, his basketball IQ, he could pass. He was 6'9". His post game was unbelievable. Uh, he could defend. Touch. He he can play five positions. Mm -hmm. He can play five positions on the court. Like he can shoot threes, mid range. He did it all. He did it all. And a uh, lot of our success came because of bars. Mm -hmm. Because we can put him at so many different positions. Mm -hmm. You know, just 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 say they want to post me up. Mm -hmm. Instead of having DJ Augustine post me post me up, where well, as soon as DJ passed, the smalls come in double team. Boris feed, the big sitting right there. The big come off, I'm right back to Boris for a three, or the big got to stay home. So Boris gave, created mismatches for us to be great. And I think any team he was on, he did that for him. You know, Boris was the good second person to have the ball. Like if you drive and kick, you got into a gap and you kick to a wing. The connector. Boris is like high level. You know, of the, that person who gets the ball, the decision maker, he can get downhill. He can get, he can give you his back and get back to the post. He can, you know what I mean, bring it back and reinitiate your offense. He was like almost like a good, it's like a hockey pass. Who was the guy on the team that you clicked with and that you chilled with uh, most out, outside of the court? And then a question for both of you. Can you remember a player that you, that was, that, that you were teammates with that had the biggest impact on the team without playing that many minutes? Good question. Mm -hmm. um, Charlotte, I, I really I, I chilled with everybody. I was cool with everybody. Me and Gerald went out to eat. Me and DJ Augustine, Sagana D. Uh, Tyrus Thomas. Yeah, shout out Ghana, Tyrus Thomas, uh, Dominic McGuire. Uh, so I, 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 really, I really was cool with all the young guys. Yeah. Gerald Henderson, mm -hmm. you know, I was cool. Larry Hughes, mm -hmm. Flip Murray, I was, I, was, I was cool with all these guys. But a guy, you talking about this team or any team? Any team. Guy that had impact on the team that didn't play. Uh, well, in Indiana, it was Anthony Johnson. 
Well, he, 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 he played. He played. He played. He played. Yeah. Play mm-hmm. Yeah. He played. He played a little bit. Um, I would. I would go San Antonio. Steve Kerr. Cause he didn't play. He didn't okay. play at all that year. Okay. But he had. He had the biggest influence. Uh, every time I used to come out the game, just for me. You know, when Pop going off, I'm gonna piss me off. He'll come. You gonna make. You gonna make a shot to win this game for us. Mm-hmm. And I go out there and end up hitting the big shot. You know, it's like he like he's seen shit before. Mm-hmm. So Steve, Steve Kerr was one of those guys. But to 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 go deeper into that to make it really make sense. When I played for um, when I played for Golden State, <laughs> Josh. I mean, excuse me, not Josh Bob. Um, a Donna Ford. Mm-hmm. A Donna Ford was on our team. The year for the We Believe, right? Mm-hmm. No, he wasn't gonna play. It was, you know, it was crazy, but he, but he was the biggest cheerleader on our team. Uh, I think he was working his way to working into the organization. But all the little things, doing timeouts, frustration on the bus, like he was the guy that kept kept that team together. I got to give a Donald for um, his props because even though he didn't play that much that year, we wouldn't have made it to the playoffs without his support and guidance. Mm-hmm. J Mac. Damn. Team that was a good one, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I can even go Kevin Willis, too. I just think it's t- like. I, I play with K Dub in Atlanta. <laughs> he's got, he usually he's keeps a good locker room. He makes sure the young fella's straight. Get young you fella. Some, get you some Willis and Walkers. Come in here and buy you some Willis and Walkers. Come get some of these. Well, he had a jean company. You know what I mean? He used to yeah. get you straight. Uh, so uh, I would have to say, damn, man, that's tough because. Um, I, mean, I played on a lot of veteran teams. I would have to say somebody like a, a man. That's a hard question because I mm-hmm. like 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 he, like like he said. I, I would think about a dude, but I was like, nah. But he played. I'll, I'll give you. I'll, I'll give you just one more last thought on that. What percentage of a team's success is on the court, the fit versus off the court? Who's in the locker room? Who's on the bench? How much you guys hang out? What do you think the it all matters. Major. It all matters. What, all of it come together. All of it come together. If, if, if equally, it's e- off, equally if, as important. Yes, mix one with if, one. If, 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 if you sixty percent on the court, locked in, but forty percent all beefing, that sixty percent gonna go, gonna keep going down. Mm-hmm. But if you sixty percent off the court, all cool, y'all families together, and you forty percent on the court, by the end of that season. That forty percent gonna be six to eighty. Mm. Yes, the so ratio you, needs it, to it, be. It starts off the court. Yeah, yes, it does. It does. It because we need to learn to, to agree to disagree. And when I see right. you out of here, because you know sometimes some people perform in there. And you know, I understand it's a job. You don't do certain things on your everybody. I'm one of them. Yeah, everybody don't do everything on the job like that. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. everybody can in the league. I he can. Some this player can walk in smelling like last night. I have yep. to have showered and have my presentation together. He can walk in reeking. I'm in there early, you know, with a cup of coffee, needing to look like a certain way. Everybody can't do everything in the league. So, like, I need to right. know how you are off the court so that we can agree to disagree so I know, okay, he ain't on all that, but he in. He just, mm-hmm. you know, we just different. So, like he said, it's very important, and the ratio has to get right. But the one off the court needs to be elevated earlier than the on the court shit, because the X's and O's gonna shake out over the year, either through the coaches or us just coming together to, you know, put it together. Facts. Mm-hmm. So just two more things before we get up out of here. Um, Stack, you played on championship teams. You made history with Golden State. Uh, where does bringing the Bobcats to the playoffs for the first time in franchise history, uh, being the main go-to guy um, and having the number one defense in the league, where does that rank on your career accomplishments just in terms of, like, pride? Like, you know, how, how proud of you are that – of you – how proud are you of that Charlotte season even though you got swept in the first round of the playoffs? You know, I, I hold that right under the championship because – Everything that was said about me, everything that people said, and I got a chance to be the face of an organization. Mm-hmm. I was, I, I had a chance to average the most points I've averaged in my career, 20-some points, 21 points, I think. I uh, got an MVP vote that year. Uh, my team was in the, the team that I was leading was the number one defensive team in the league. I got the organization to the playoffs for the first time. Um, all that coming together, it meant, it meant everything to me. I think I, I hold that real close because a lot of people – had a lot of success in the league, but they can't carry teams to the playoffs. They can't say they did that. Um, and I know I should have made the All-Star game. I know I didn't make it. 
I know I did make it. It wasn't because because of basketball. It was because of other things. So everything that I accomplished that year, being able to be the uh, number one defense, you know, get us to the playoffs, all that. I, I hold that real close because I was able to do that. Not on the not on the back of Tim Duncan, not on the back of Jermaine O'Neal. Mm. You know, I was I, I was the go-to player on that team, mm. and to say I was able to carry it and do something to what we did, we didn't win the championship, but we had a successful season. Mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I hold that I hold that dear to my heart. Do you did you learn anything about like being the go-to guy? Because th- really, like if you're not, if you're not showing up, like the team's probably not going to win. Uh, I mean, I know you're always confident in yourself and you're always ready to play, but like w- anything in that process that you learned or like tricks of the trade, just like, cause being on and, and being on every single day is hard. Um, Facts. and that's expected of you. Facts. Uh, am I overthinking it? Is there anything you learned or is it just as simple as like show up every day and, and play your hardest? Nah, I mean, for, for me, I mean, the, the, to whom much is given, much is required. Yep. So with you being a star player, with you being the guy that's getting all the shots, obviously you're gonna have to take more criticism. Uh, when shit go wrong, it's always your fault. Mm-hmm. Whether it's, you know what I'm saying, whether you playing well or not, mm-hmm. that comes with it. But you would take that that opportunity and deal with all the bullshit that come with it, then not take that opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. I, 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 p- players go through NBA their careers dying to be a guy that has the ultimate green light. You know, the guy, the go-to guy, the guy that's the, the, the you know what I'm saying? The guy, you one of them. <laughs> the guy that the, guy that the team says, this is our guy. You know, mm-hmm. you're doing all the photo shoots. You want all the tickets and all that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That, it, it felt good to do that, consider everything that was said about me. So for MJ to do that for me, I think it was big. And I think that's why we had some success, because we gave everything for him. I know I gave everything for him. And uh, we didn't win the championship, but, but seeing him on the sideline when we was in the playoffs, he was he was real excited about being being able to say his team was there. So I'm glad I had a part in that. As a, as a, as a player, as a fan, as a, a a basketball historian, as somebody whose career went up and down, having started, you know, in, injured reserve, you know what I mean, played on championship teams, playoff teams, whatever. Uh, um, it's just seeing somebody in stacks position, and and the guy is in in an organization who has to show up every day. You know what I mean? You can create something special with it. Doesn't surprise me what Charlotte did because he got an opportunity to learn from some some dope people who had to show up every single day. Tim Duncan, you know, just the whole it just just the San Antonio experience alone is you know basically showing up every day. You playing for chips. So as a guy yep. from the outside looking looking in, as one of those guys he spoke of, like damn man, I just want an opportunity. To you know what I mean, be the dude to goes for twenty. It ain't once you get that opportunity, like you know what I mean. It you got to be cut from a particular cloth yep. to maintain the trajectory of the twenty person to tw- the guy every single day. You know, from from team to team, if it happens, because then you're an asset. If you're penciled in as the guy and you're having a season like Jack, well, well we know what we're going to get. We're getting a dub. Right. We're getting five here. We're getting four there. You know what I mean? That, you know what I mean? The, the weight of that, you know what I mean, uh, uh, mentally and physically, is it, it takes a toll. And having played and been next to players who did it, you know, at that level, um, is just commendable because you, it ain't for everybody. Sometimes I don't, we don't see people right. get the opportunity as the guy and then go right back to, you know, I'm gonna go back to this 4.5, 5.7 score. You ever wonder why people have a good year and then they well, go somewhere and get some money and then the cliff happens? Well, Jack also, right. you, uh, that's a big thing that people say about players in San Antonio and like a place like Miami a system. You're probably one of the only few players that left San Antonio and continued mm-hmm. to go up. A lot of times mm-hmm. people get comfortable in that system. Name one besides Kawhi. Mm-hmm. Um, that left San Antonio and got better. Derek White right now is is pretty good. Oh, trending. Yeah, did, a, trending. trending. Did, 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 but 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 Derek didn't do what I did in San Antonio. He didn't win a champ. No, the teams weren't any good when he was there. That's fair. Right? No, he didn't do what I did in San Antonio. The only person I would say is Kawhi. Because Kawhi went and exceeded more than I can ever do, but he did the, he did work in San Antonio as well. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just honestly trying to work through the road. Uh, yeah, uh, hey, I don't I, see I, nobody. I don't, I'm not, nobody's really coming to mind. A lot of players do the opposite. Um, last thing before we get out of here, we didn't really talk about MJ, but I know that's your guy, and we hear so much about him. I mean, 
the the stories are endless. There's an aura about him. He's intimidating, black Jesus. But your experience with MJ, if I remember correctly, was a little bit different. You found out that MJ is kind of like a normal dude, wants to win. But uh, take us back to when you when you met MJ on the Bobcats and and just what your relationship was uh, with him. And during the season, also, was he ever giving you game? You know, picking apart your your performances. Like, what was MJ being there? like for you mm-hmm. it meant everything to me i mean you know the favorite my favorite player of all time the goat i um i had i had a chance to uh play like a couple months against them before i got traded and i had a great game and uh somebody came from behind and said uh good game motherfucker, good game that's what i'm talking about and i'm thinking this you know somebody that i really know you know what i'm saying but just the smell, you know, just the voice. Every, that every MJ Cologne, that's that MJ Cologne. This, Remember, this MJ wasn't had no that normal cologne. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah this, this this wasn't a normal motherfucker. It just n- nothing was normal about it. Just everything like just changed when Freshness. he you know, yeah. Man, yeah. I turned around, I almost passed out. I'm like, Black Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, 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 but you know what I mean. I was in awe when I saw him. You know, I shook his hand. And, I was just you know in in awe that he knew my name. He knew who I was. You know what I'm saying? Just just MJ, bro. So. um Fast forward, you know, a couple months, that was his, that was him telling me, you know, I'm trying to get you to come, come play for you. me. That was him telling me that, yeah. And um, it, I got pictures, bro, of me sitting on the sideline, me talking to him, doing the game. I come out the game, I'm asking him, he telling me certain stuff that he see that he that I should do or how easy it should be. As, that he can't guard you, like, all, all that type of stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Because how many, how many people can say that? Can't imagine. How many people can say that they sitting on the sideline with MJ getting game from MJ, how many people can say they played for MJ? How many people can say that they had a big part of getting Michael Jordan's franchise to the playoffs for the first time? A lone bright like, spot. All, all, a lone bright spot. You know what I'm saying? So, so everything. Anytime I could interact, even with the talking the trash and practice, me and him and going back, me and him going back and forth because he wanted because we wasn't playing well, and he had to come in and, and give us some tough love so we can get back to playing well and, and humble ourselves. Mm-hmm. All, we appreciated all that because it's just MJ. Because if you're gonna take that from anybody, you can take it from Michael Jordan. Facts. 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 But but hold on. But what if you can't take it anyway, and you're taking it from Michael Jordan? There's a down. There's a downside to that too. You got to be. If you can't take if it. If you can't take it anyway. If you're having problems, ta- you know, taking it anyway, and then on top of that, you're taking it from Michael Jordan, no freaky, you know, <laughs> that, that, that that can take that can tank that can turn your career, right? It's like it's not only is it mm-hmm. a coach, it's like or the president of the team or the GM, like it's like you know, if uh, Mitch Kupchak come down talking talking you know talking crazy too, we need you to do that. It's like uh, okay, but if it's Michael Jordan coming down, you got no option. You take heed to it yeah, or, instantly or does can it tear you? It can easily tear you down. You play with yeah, him. You? I'm, not, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking objectively. Like it can all. Did you see it tear anybody down? You strong willed. I know you. I know you like a large part of. Me, my I, life. I, I'm, I, that's a good question, but yeah. let me tell you why I didn't. Because we had young guys like Gerald Henderson, Gerald Brown, nah. DJ Augustine, Duke. Sagana. Yeah, bro, they loved it. Yeah, oh. you know, and, and Mike, and Mike, because and you know, Mike, they wasn't even playing that much. So Mike actually was working out with them at the practice when we all gone. Mm-hmm. Mike actually working out with them, mm-hmm. so he was on them harder than he was us. Mm-hmm. And I, but then again, dog, I say when you're in the NBA too, and you you right, Jelani. Some guys could take it wrong, but when you're in the NBA and you playing for a guy like Michael Jordan, if you take it the wrong way, that's something you dealing with. Yeah, because I guarantee you, if it's about basketball and it's about his organization, it's coming from the right place. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's saying what's need to be said. If you taking it the wrong way, I'm pretty sure that's something you're dealing with. Have you uh, have you been back to Charlotte since you left there? Like, have you have you been a part of the organization at all, or not yet? Nah, you know um, I haven't. And I, to be honest, which I'm hurt by it. I, I, I see them bringing people back. You know what I'm saying? And, and like Golden State, and this this is why this is why I speak so highly of Golden State because that's the only organization that showed me that they appreciate what I've done for my time there. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel Charlotte, I, I still got records in Charlotte. Mm. I still got records in Charlotte. How many they play? How many name a player since I left that got an MVP vote? I mean, Kemba's the only dude that did anything of much. Maybe he got one. I don't even know though. You know what I'm saying? So like I I, I know I, I know I left a stain 
uh, in Charlotte and on a good note, basketball wise. And uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to always have a bad taste in my mouth, no freaky, for San Antonio and uh, Charlotte because I think they owe me some type of recognition. Mm. Well, Charlotte, you heard it here first. I mean, you're in the headlines for the wrong reasons for bringing certain players back in the midst of allegations. Bring Steven Jackson yeah. back and celebrate him. I mean, I, 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 would, I would come, and I think that would be only right. We shouldn't even have to ask. Yeah. All right, Stack, we appreciate you, man. Um, this was great. Forgotten Seasons. Catch us every Wednesday. Catch you guys next week. Peace. Appreciate y'all. Peace.